Hey everybody, welcome back. So uh, even though I haven't really done a lot in the realm of working on the shed, I figured I'd just do a quick update since it's been a little while. So let's go take a look in there and I'll show you what I've done and been doing and mostly just cleaning up. But I'll show you where everything is, how everything is set up, and then I'll go over a couple of the rigs that I have because people uh, seem to like that sort of thing. So let me turn around and we'll go inside. All right, so first thing first is we have a door. That still works. And notice that it's a lot more open in here as far as space goes. I did go buy a bookshelf and I started putting a lot of my empty boxes and such on here. Um, some of the stuff I don't need, but a lot of it I do like holding on to. You never know when you're gonna sell something or in the case of, for example, those two boxes right there are motherboard boxes and if you ever have to send one back to the manufacturer, sometimes they like you to have that. But it's just a lot of extra boxes and things like that that I've had in here. And then some of the boxes for the racing stuff and the flight sim stuff and whatnot. So, but it is getting emptier. Now this computer, I don't remember if I showed it in the last video, but this video or this computer is a desktop that I had traded my laptop that I used to run my racing rig off of. For that now that's a just a bare bones specs i'll give you it's an i7 6950x which is an older 10 core 20 thread intel processor it's got 32 gigs of ram in it and it's basically it used to have a gtx 980 ti which has been put into my home rig in my on my desk in the house um, and then the one that's in there that's actually an old Radeon 7750 or 7550, something like that, video card. And the only reason it's in there was just so I could remote into this using TeamViewer easily because at one point I thought I was going to try to repurpose this as a Plex server, but the CPU by itself, it's not quite strong enough to do all the transcoding that I would need to. Plus, this shed is on a separate internet connection, sort of. So I have one main fiber line that goes into the house. From there, I have my house network, and then I branched off and brought a run out to here, into that media panel. Um, but as such, I have them configured as two separate networks. Um, and because of that, anything that I wanted to play in the house, instead of being a direct stream, for example, like I had off my last desktop, or my regular desktop, instead of anything being a direct stream, it ends up being, you know, it needs to basically go over the air. Even though it's all the same physical connection wire-wise, it is two separate networks, so you would actually have to basically stream it instead of just playing it back. There's a lot more in-depth as far as a Plex server goes, but that's the short version. Unfortunately, it means that anything I wanted to play, if I wanted to watch any movies, which are on a hard drive that I had plugged into this, any movies I wanted to watch, I had to stream. Now, bandwidth-wise, I'm fine, but the processing power in this, not quite up to par, um, at least with no GPU. So, that's what it is. Um, still works fine, um, but I just didn't have a use for it, and I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so now we're on the other end of the shed, and this is where all the goodies are. So, um, we'll go over this one first, and then we'll get to that one. So let me turn this around, and I'll show you why I'm not using that desktop anymore. And that's because I built this. I built this a week and a half ago or so, and uh, I'll Put a link down below i did actually live stream that on twitch the build the majority of it uh, up until the cable management part but this is a brand new desktop with the exception of the graphics card just to give you the specs on this this is an i7 10700k so it's last generation's intel i7 uh, really from a gaming standpoint jumping up to an 11700 from a 10700 is at best a wash and at worst actually a slight downgrade just because of clock speeds not important certainly overkill for what i'm going to be doing and well it'll work fine so it's got that it's got uh this is a fantex p500 a digital case that's where these three fans in the front came from now the fan in the back is a, another fantex fan that just matches these um, i bought an extra one and put it in the back as an exhaust fan the two on the top are part of a fantex glacier one 280 mp liquid cooler it's actually where you get that little uh, if I zoom in this little kind of windowy looking piece right there 
that is side slide uh, sidestepped by this set of let me open this up G skill Trident Z Royal uh, this stuff is crazy it's G, G skill Trident Z Royal DDR4 3600 16 timing memory overkill yes way flashier than it needs to be I mean that's chrome plated finish it's not like it's see-through it's like that reflective it's insane it's way overkill and way more expensive than it needed to be but I figured I would splurge and then uh, at the bottom you've got a Corsair 850 power supply and the big kicker is this GTX nope yeah GTX 1070 FTW card from EVGA that's been in my desktop in my house for a long time um, about four years now I think the problem is is that it's still impossible to get a hold of a video card and I wanted to build this new computer and didn't have one so rather than wait until I get a card and then do everything at once I decided that since the laptop that I had that uh, wonderful little um, GS66 uh, from MSI had a 2070 max Q variant in it now that max Q was performance-wise, basically the same as my 1070. So even though it's a generation and a half newer, uh, it really wasn't better for performance. Uh, basically, the Max-Q variant was designed more for uh, silent running and, and, and low-draw operation, which came at the cost of performance. So my desktop 1070 FTW card, which is, I think it slots just below a 70 Ti and just above a 1070 regular, somewhere in there, but either way, I knew on paper it would make sense. Plus, there was an advantage. So, if you notice, I have three monitors hooked up. One, two, three. And if you look on the left, obviously we have um, Streamlabs OBS streaming software with this new webcam. Uh, I've been trying to figure out where to put it, so I bought that little cheap mount from Amazon. And instead of having it on an arm, I put it over here. So far, I think I like it, but we'll find out. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Three monitors means that I can actually plug all three of these into the GPU on the back instead of having to run it through some weird funky docking station like I did before. Which means that the experience is actually a lot better and believe it or not, I actually get better frame rates now than I did off that laptop, probably because of the same thing. And I'm also running at full resolution, 1440 on every monitor instead of scaled down to 1080. And I'm also running at 120 Hertz refresh rate. They can actually do 144. I actually scaled it down to 120 because the extra 24 is really not going to matter for eye racing, at least in my eyes. And I figured any little extra oomph I can give the video card as far as overhead goes would be better. So computer wise, that's what we're running now. Um, it does have a one terabyte SSD, uh, an M.2 in there. Um, but everything else, I mean, went together well, it went together weirdly, only because of the cooler design is a little strange to me. But either way, it went together great, and it runs that, and it also runs the flight sim all at the same time. So let me get around, and we'll go through the racing rig first. Okay, so I've done this before on other videos, I think, but maybe not on here. But anyway, um, let's move our little table out of the way. I use this as a mouse pad just because of space. But here we go. We have... Starting at the bottom, a GT Omega Prime cockpit. That's this black aluminum stuff. Uh, came from GT Omega. And their RS9 seat, which is on a slider, so I can actually move it front and backwards. We have a Thrustmaster T300 RS GT wheelbase, as well as their open wheel add-on. Now, by default, it comes with a round wheel, but I wanted the more buttons, so there we go. Down here, we have some... Fanatic V3 Club Sport pedals with the brake performance kit and cars passing by me. See, it's that realistic. You get the car sound. We also have a Club Sport 2.5 uh, H pattern slash sequential shifter. I almost never use it. Sequential wise, I'll use the paddles on the wheel. And H pattern wise, I don't run enough cars that use it, but I have it just in case. Um, so that's the rig itself in a nutshell. Works well. I have a keyboard stand. That keyboard tray actually came from Track Racer because GT Omega had not released accessories for the Prime cockpit yet. 
I do plan on picking some of the new stuff up just because I like some of it a little bit better. For example, the new keyboard arm. This one here is just on a, on a little 90 degree swivel. Let's move this guy out of the way. So right here, and this just kind of goes back and forth. But the problem is, is it's very, you can tell I can kind of tighten it. Doesn't matter how tight I get it, it always seems to go back down further. Not a fan of the angle, and there's just not enough adjustability for me. So I do want to get the GT Omega one. And this is just a little old Galaxy tab that I use for dashboard stuff. We have a stream deck over here, just a regular stream deck, and that's for controlling things like OBS. Not that I stream a lot, but I figured it would be handy to have just in case, and it has been. Uh, what else? Oh, well, the keyboard's just a Logitech wireless one that was with the mouse, mainly because wires are just a pain and I was running out of USB ports. So, cool. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, monitors are Westinghouse, so they're not exactly high brand. It's not like a Samsung or LG monitor. So the brightness is a little bit lower than your typical ones, but for racing wise, and especially since most of my stuff is done at the in the evening, and I can always turn the lights off out here, that brightness is perfectly fine. It doesn't matter to me. They are 32 inch. They are 1440p monitors at 144 hertz refresh rate. And now I can actually finally push them there. Uh, other little things, I have a Razer uh, Nary Essentials cheapy Walmart special uh, headphones. They work fine. Um, I had another pair of Razer Kraken V2s that eventually just wore out and uh, so now I use these and they do work fine as far as that goes. And a little 3D printed uh, headphone holder, I guess we'll call it. The monitor stand itself, more of this aluminum and that's a little rubber uh, foam thing from the headphones because it's just an add-on thing. Uh, anyway, so we have this uh, black aluminum profile stand that I bought more of this from Amazon. And then I bought a couple of, these are, well, modified, but you'll recognize that part backwards as a regular TV mount. Unfortunately, they sent me the wrong ones and they didn't have enough reach. And rather than deal with returning, you know, what amounted to be a $30 monitor stand, or monitor mount, rather, I just took some one inch aluminum square tubing I had and just replaced the section with the longer section in order to be able to give me uh, enough room. And then back here, it's just a standard flush mount that works fine. And the nice part is it's a separate stand so I can actually slide the rig in and out if I needed to or the monitors in and out. I do have speakers. They are, it's a 2.1. I found these again at Walmart and that's the name of them, Klipsch whatever. Uh, they work great. Uh, pardon the dust on it. That was from building my little uh, stand here and I just haven't packed it up. They work great. They, they do work really well. They sound good. They go plenty loud. I rarely use them because I'm usually using all the in-game audio through my headphones. If I'm going to be talking, I'll use the headphones with the microphone. Uh, I do have an extension arm that I can bolt into here that comes over, so I may at some point look into buying a microphone. But for now... That's it. All right, welcome to my Cessna, sort of. So this right here is the culmination of my flight sim setup. Now there's a couple things going on here. One, this is not a Cessna airplane, but the panel and the gauges, at least as of right now, are kind of modeled similar in style to like a Cessna 172, but the version with the analog gauges and not the fancy new GPS gauge or the, you know, the, the big screen gauges, I'll call them. So we'll go over this one as well. GT Omega Art Cockpit. So sticking with the GT Omega theme. The only difference is they didn't have any seats in stock. So I went to the junkyard and I got one out of a Pontiac Grand Prix. That yoke in the middle, that's the steering wheel looking thing for those who don't know what a yoke is. That's the one I bought, and it came with that little guy down there, these little three-lever throttles down here. Down there, we have some Logitech pedals. They came along for the ride for rudder stuff. And over here, we have a radio panel. Uh, these are all Logitech panels. The radio panel, um, this is, well, it's a multifunction panel, I guess they call it, but autopilot, things like that. And then down here, we have a switch panel, main switch controls. So you have things like your light switches and stuff like that, landing gear up and down and all that fun stuff. This is an older iPad Pro, and right next to it is its big brother, the iPad Air 4. Now, there's a couple things with this. This one is actually just in a case, and it's physically VHB taped right to this 
panel thing that I have. This one is actually not. This one is on a little 3D printed shelf that I just kind of whipped up in Tinkercad and printed off just so I had something I could sit this on. Because this one I actually plan to use when I ever start taking actual flying lessons. Uh, but I can also use it to take to the boat, and I use it on this really fancy mount called a pivot mount. Um, quite expensive little guy, but it works great. So all these gauges run through an application called Sim, or nope, it's called Air Manager. So you run a little plug-in on your computer, and then your gauges all work. It does have some cool things. So for example, the prop isn't started. You can just reach down here to the switch, hit start, and away you go. So it's pretty neat when it comes down to that. Um, obviously, as you can see, it's just a chug and ride along. Um, and then, I don't know why I stepped away, but let's go back down real quick. So, for example, um, right here, we also have our RPM gauge. So our throttle is right now back at idle. If we crank this up, you'll see our revs will just jump and climb up. And you can also see over here, some of these gauges are, are playing and, you know, voltage and even our little uh, guy over here is kind of bobbling around because of the vibration from the motor. So all in all, it's pretty cool. Um, I like having it. I haven't really played with it much. Since I rebuilt this computer, I had to re-download everything. And then after I downloaded everything, uh, I tried going on a little bit of a flight. It sort of worked. And then they released Update 5, which was a massive update. It was like another 40 gigs. It took me an entire day to download. And a lot of people, they said it broke. Uh, it also said that your FPS increased. So I did fly a little bit after that. But for now, well, for now, it's just kind of chilling. So... Um, I've been debating on whether or not I want to fly tonight or race, and tonight I think it's going to be a race because I haven't done that in a while. And I feel like letting out some frustration by kicking a bunch of people in a Miata while the neighbors make lots of noise. But there you go. There's my shed. Uh, and this is the whole reason to have a shed, actually. Um, so really, I only needed, you know, 100 square feet and I'd have been fine. Probably would have been better. I could have just thrown an air conditioner in the window and it would have cooled it down plenty fine. Um, the rest of this I am going to turn into the rest of the workshop and uh, stuff like that, computer repair, all that junk. But anyway, um, I'll leave a link below for when I built that computer. Uh, maybe I'll even upload that stream as an upload. Um, I have to go find it. I think it's actually on that 6950X server over there. I think that's where the video is actually at. Um, but anyway, that's everything built up and where I'm at. Got all the lights in the shed, they all play fancy. I even have a little, even got my little controller out so I can, uh, you know, make it do funny colors, wool, um, stuff like that. Cool, huh? So everything works, everything's good. And that is where my shed is. Right now, it's literally, everything is done the way I want it until it's inspected. Once it's inspected, then I can actually start putting like insulation in the walls and and get it kind of uh, finished off in here. Anyway, so thanks for watching. That's the shed update. Uh, it was really not much of a project. It was just more of an update as to where the state of everything is. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go throw my green screen back over in front of that so I can look like I have a brick wall behind me and go racing. So anyway, thanks for watching.